It's about uh, a world that's very close to the world we live in right now, where a new form of entertainment has emerged of humans actually able to control not virtual characters, but real humans to force them to do anything they want them to do, whether it's have sex with one another or kill one another, all real, all the time. In Slayers, um, you know, people are paying to control, uh, you know, inmates. But there's also another game inside of Gamer. It's called Society, which is a more fetishy world. It's more like as if Second Life were put into the real world. We could control people to say or do anything that they wanted to say, and um, and do fetishy weird little things. First of all, Brian and I, we write the treatments together. We'll, we'll, we'll write the script, we pass it back and forth. So we're on the same page with the idea. And when we get to set, we, we kind of have conversations with the actors and we do a football huddle. We all like, okay, everybody come in here and we, we talk about the idea that we want um, and, and, and the story point and then we're, we put our hands in and we're like, okay, and break. And we go out and we, we shoot it. You know, that's and both Mark it. and I operate the cameras too. So you know, we're always right there in the middle of the action. Everything you see in the movie, we're right there shooting it, um, and we know exactly what we want. So it's a it's it's a kind of filmmaking that's a little different than what some people do. It comes really naturally to us. We're total adrenaline junkies. I mean, we're ha hanging out of helicopters, hanging out of cars. Um, I'm on rollerblades, shooting and directing. You know, holding on to a car going 50 miles an hour. Try we're doing Jerry that. Butler shooting a gun out of the car. It, we just go out there and have fun. It's like a playground, you know. And we do it fast and, and fun. And it's dangerous. And hopefully, it'll look dangerous to the to the audience because we we risked our asses and so didn't the actors to make the movie. Um, but that's all part of the fun, you know. It's it's an awesome system. You know, the red is great. You know, we feel like it's. We feel like it's the next thing. Uh, it's, it looks better than 35 to RI, and the camera is basically a little computer that you can run with. Yeah, you can reprogram it on the set in a matter of five minutes by downloading a program that RED will send you. Um, it's lightweight. Uh, it, we can shoot with a super high shutter speed, which gives it a real like saving Private Ryan frenetic feel and like a crank feel that we do with our movies. He has a total physical and mental commitment every day he shows up on set. And he knows what he wants and he trains at such a high level that all of the military stuff in the movie, all the action that he does, the shooting, the running, the tactical movement, he can really do all of that. We train him with the uh, Navy SEALs and Special Forces guys. He can really do it all. Michael C. Hall is a genius. He's fantastic and you know we, um, we had wanted to work with this guy just from seeing him on Dexter. Um, and it was sort of like an obsession, like we've got to get Michael C. Hall for this movie, to the point where the character was kind of crafted specifically for him. Um, and you talk about a, a professional and a guy that just brings such an intellectual muscle to everything that he does. Um, it's, you know, he's amazing. We made this movie just a fun action film. It's like kick ass, it's, it's in your face, uh, it's an adventure, and um, you know, it's a little bit of Running Man, it's a little bit of Mad Max, it's a little bit of all the action films out there packed into one piece. They can expect to just get their asses kicked. We want people to walk out of the theater with their knees and inner thighs trembling, like, did that really happen? We want it to just be a, an experience, an experience that people haven't had before. Well, we've known Gerard for a long time. Actually, Gerard was that close to being Chef Chelios in the Crank movies. So we've known him for a while. We've wanted to work with him for a while. And he's really like, um, he's one of the iconic action stars that's out there right now. I and mean, there's we... not really many guys who can bring the physicality and just the, the sort of like masculinity to these hard action roles like he can. And you know, after 300, it was such a big hit. And e even though we were friends with him, we knew him. We didn't think we were going to get him for this movie. We were thinking, you know, he's going to take a billion other offers. But he really responded to the script and sort of the insanity of it and the message of it, the dark message of it. And uh, when we knew we had him, we just felt like we had our movie. You know, we had our guy. We did. I mean, when we wrote the movie uh, and we were writing Ken Castle, we actually were watching Dexter at the time. And immediately we're like, we got to get Michael C. Hall for this role. Mm -hmm. It'd be great. Um, it's funny because I had never seen uh, Six Feet Under. I only knew Michael from Dexter. So 
Um, but we thought he was so amazing in that we were determined to have him be our Ken Castle. And I remember the first day when he came in uh, to, to meet with us um, at the studio, it was like Dexter walking in. It wasn't like an actor walking in. It was like Dexter walking in. I kind of got creeped out a little bit. It was awesome. And and then you talk to him, and he, when you talk to him, it's it's like talking to Dexter. So. Yeah, I was nervous. I like kept having to hold myself back from asking him for his autograph. Yeah, it was a interesting little experience. Oh, she's an angel. Amber Valletta is an angel. I mean, she was just the perfect uh, person for the part because you could. She's got so much soul in her eyes. You're asking an actor to do something kind of complicated and difficult in this movie because she's being controlled. So really, she's playing two things at the same time. She's playing herself. She's playing the person, she's playing the character that her controller wants to see, but then she's also playing her internal life underneath that. So we needed somebody who, who wasn't just beautiful, but somebody who kind of had this, these deep, soulful eyes where you could read emotion in, even if she wasn't explicitly saying I mean, what it was, was like that a, she really meant. Like a robotic sex figurine. But, yeah. but underneath that, you did. You had to see the soul. You had to see her vulnerability, and, uh, and Amber had that from the first audition when we saw her. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a, it's kind of an amazing little performance that she gives. It's so layered. And even within the context of what's a, you know, pretty kinetic, crazy action movie, to have somebody who can sort of bring it that humanity was, we thought we really needed it. And uh, she killed it. Uh, we actually met with him probably two or three months after Crank came out. And uh, when, first of all, when we found out that Ludacris wanted to take a meeting with us, we're, we were in shock and, and in love at the same time. And he, wow. he, sat, he, sat, he, sat, he sat down with us and he said, I want you guys to write me something. I want you guys to just, you know, put me in your brain. Start thinking about me and your movies. And uh, when we wrote the, the Humans character, he was, you know, he, we basically wrote it for Ludacris. It's really fun to populate your movie with, with these different faces and also ask actors to do things that they're not known for doing or that takes them outside of their comfort zone. Certainly in the case of like Milo Ventimiglia, for instance, who's known as this sort of very heart of gold, heroic, clean cut, <laughs> heroic kid in, in Heroes, and you see what we have him doing, he loved it. I mean, he loved the opportunity to do something that just sick, twisted and bizarre and different from what anybody would ever expect him to do. And it was the same thing for, uh, not the same thing, but, but Kira Sedgwick had a lot of fun with it. Um, all, all the actors who we brought in are doing things that are very unlike what they normally do, and they had a great time with it. It allowed us to, um, having these awesome grounded actors allowed us to sort of play and really go out there, and uh, it helps our crazy film seem a little more mainstream. We didn't have a lot of money to, to make the sets, but we had the best guy for the job. We had Jerry Fleming, who we worked with on, on Crank One and, and also Pathology. And um, he's a guy who can uh, take five bucks and make it look like, you know, $5,000. So um, <laughs> we just, we, we want to create this world in Gamer that was five minutes in the future. Um, and in doing that, we're like, well, how techno heavy and modern and futuristic do we want to go? And we realized that you know, you look at New York City, how much has it really changed over, you know, 50 years, the look of it? It looks pretty much the same. So we wanted to make the technology and production design about smaller, you know, and, and things like an, yeah, an invisible interface. It's not going to be like flying cars and, you know, the city of the future. It's, it's a city that you can see right now. Um, you can feel right sort now. Sort of amplified and a little wrong. Uh, one of the things that we were intent on doing was use real locations and sort of repurpose them. Instead of building, for instance, a prison, a futuristic prison, which we felt any way that you choose to go with that is gonna be corny. We so thought, we used the toilet instead. So we used the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, what we, did, what we did use was we used a, a gypsum mine that was, uh, that was on the outskirts of the town that we were shooting in um, and just repurposed it into a kind of prison that you've never seen before. We like using practical locations for things that they weren't intended for because even if that's not what it is, you can tell that what you're looking at is a useful place. It's a useful thing that, that, that people have lived in and used and it's not just a set in a movie and it's not something artificial. But the RED camera is lightweight. It's shooting an image that's basically an IMAX quality image and it's doing that on little flashcards like you would put in a digital camera. 
um, that you bought at Best Buy. It's, it's an amazing thing. And we actually beta tested these cameras on the movie. We, this is the first big movie ever shot with these cameras. And uh, you know, we had a great time with them. And, and they're light enough to, for us to do all of our crazy stuff on rollerblades and hanging out of helicopters and whatnot. So you're a little bit, little bit safer. With a with a 15 pound camera, yeah, as opposed to a 60 pound, you know, BL 35 millimeter camera, we were able to move the camera in ways that we, you just couldn't do with a traditional like this. Uh, yeah, like exactly. See, try doing <laughs> that with. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see it. Yeah, with one of those, ain't gonna happen. <laughs>